<laughs> Stephanie's so funny. <laughs> Okay, guys, I was supposed to watch Lagan for this week's Road Back to India, but the movie lasts for like four hours. I don't have four hours. I'm so sorry. I actually I do four, have four hours and I will make time for next week. So for this week, there were still a lot of questions. Oh, wait. I didn't turn on the sound. Two seconds. Also, I'm sitting a little bit closer. Hello. How do you like my nostrils? <laughs> Anyways. Uh, there were still a lot of questions from last week's Q&A. So I thought, you know what? Let's answer more questions about India. If you are Indian and you would like to add comments to my answers, please put them down in the comments below. And also, if you have any new questions about India, also put them down in the comments below and we can make a India Q&A part three or something, you know. So, Queen Cat, you had a lots and lots of questions, but... Uh, Fortunately, an Indian viewer already answered two of your questions, so I'm just going to move on to the questions that are still unanswered. What is your best way to react if someone don't leave you alone, wants to talk to you about something, or some guy who wants to sell something you don't want? Well, actually, um, I have been told all my life that I can be quite intimidating, So, and also I have a resting bitch face. So if I really don't want something, I will just firmly, very firmly tell them, no, I don't want, actually, I don't shout, but I will just be like very friendly, always stay friendly because otherwise people get mad and you get into much more trouble than if you, you know, would have just stayed nice. Um, just say, no, I'm sorry, I don't want this. And um, I will keep repeating that a hundred times. I have a lot of patience in India. There was this one guy, a rickshaw driver in um, in Kochi. He, uh, it was a low season, so there were very few tourists in Kochi. And he kept chasing me. There's actually a vlog about this and this guy. He was so funny. And I, no, no, thank you. I, uh, <laughs> I think that's getting for supper. No, no. Thank you. No, thank you. No, no. Hello, reply. It's one elephant festival. No, thank you. Air condition. No, thank you. Ik zou ook opdringerig zijn, dus uh, ik vind niet erg. Oh, komt u nou weer? Ja, <laughs> komt weer. <laughs> Laat maar. Bye bye. Bye. Zie je, dan rijden ze gewoon ook wel aardig terug. Oh, gaat u nou weer wachten? Verdorie, wat ben ik nou aan het doen? No, no. So he kept chasing me because it was low season and he, uh, well, he wanted, of course, to make a salary like any person would. And especially like if you have children, if you want to feed them or if you just want to have dinner yourself, you will keep trying until you find a customer. So he kept chasing me and I was just like, no, no, I'm going to the restaurant. It's like the street after this one. So there was really no need for a rickshaw. He was like, oh, no, la, la, la. And then he just kept coming and coming and coming. I was, and I just kept going like, no, 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 no. And I honestly can't get mad at these people, especially like if they're selling something or the rickshaw drivers or whatever. If somebody tries to touch me, okay, then we have a problem. But if it's just someone trying to make a living, you know, provide for their family, I can't get mad at that. And you shouldn't either. Just keep telling them no and it will be fine. Also, I've been asked out by Indian guys and I've just told them my husband is sick in the hotel room and I have to get back to him. I also wore a wedding ring when I was in India and they were very respectful about that. One guy even started giving me advice about uh, what I, what coconuts I should give to my husband. Apparently, like the yellow ones, not the green ones, to, you know, help his stomach ache and stuff like that. So just tell them no and tell them no a hundred times if it's necessary. Don't get angry. And everything should be fine. Indian guys, people are quite respectful if you say no. It's it's fine. Following up on this question, you asked, I know you are a smiling girl, as I do, but I frequently read that it's not good to be so friendly with people because this is seen like an invitation of more. You know, I am so curious and easily amazed, so it's hard for me to imagine myself not being very happy to discover a new culture so different from mine. What do you think about that? Well, you should keep smiling, girl. Like, people will go to great lengths to help you if they like you, and they will like you more if you're a happy, cheerful person than if you're, like, a grumpy, you know, I don't know, a-hole. <laughs> so no definitely like if somebody sees it as an invitation that's really their problem and also like I mentioned previously if you just say no people will leave you alone sometimes you have to say no a hundred times but that's fine like 
you know, people are trying to make a living sometimes. So it's definitely not an invitation. Please smile. Please be your happy self. I wouldn't have been able to do all the wonderful things that I'd done in India. I haven't I wouldn't have been able to solve the problems that I had in India, not that I had that much problems, if I wouldn't have been kind and respectful and smiling to people. So actually, it is your key to have a wonderful time in India. Don't, don't be grumpy if you are not a grumpy person. You know, leave that up to grumpy cat. Final question from Kath. I would like to know if you experienced a way to haggle which was better than the others. Actually, also following up, um, I will play the dumb, innocent girl and always keep smiling and always be friendly. I think the, the aggressive method and the rude method of haggling is more reserved for guys and people accept that more from guys. For girls, I feel it works a lot better to just act like you're ignorant, like, oh my gosh, that's really that expensive? Wow, I expected it to be a lot less. But this is like, I only have this much money. Can you please help me? I really, really like your shop. It's so beautiful. Yes, that's what works best for me. Also, when you're haggling, please do realize that these people are trying to make a living for their family. And if you haggle too much, they might not be able to buy dinner for their children or for themselves. So for me, I was never a really tough haggler. I, um, how do you say that? I, I'd rather pay more and haggle less with a person who is making a living for their family than give money, donate money to charity that will spend it on marketing. That was like always in the back of my mind, like even with rickshaw drivers, when I would, you know, get, um, when I would pay like twice the price on the meter. So for instance, 40 rupees instead of 20 rupees and 40 rupees is like 50 cents, 50 euros. since it's nothing. It's like a difference of 20 cents. I would be like, God bless you. Please have an extra chaya on me. You're a hardworking person. And like I said, I would rather give my money to you and see where my money is going to instead of a charity that will spend it on marketing. So um, please do keep that in mind when you're haggling. Not saying you shouldn't haggle because it's fun, but don't try to get the lowest price. It's, for me, it's not worth it. Mind of Mind says, what kind of tourists do you encounter in India and what is your experience with them? I don't know if I will actually go to India, but I'm always curious about the people you can meet in certain countries. And I know tourists will be a lot easier to approach when you travel. In my experience, that's actually not true because in India, you also have, it's such a massive, massive country. Uh, you will also have lots and lots of Indian tourists. So they were, uh, the tourists that I've primarily seen from the Indian side were like families who are so cute and I love interacting with them and they're so open. Also, I met solo female traveler travelers, like Indian solo female travelers who are also very cool and you can learn a lot about their culture from them. The Western tourists that I met um were usually well one guy was there for three or four days and of course I met Roberto and Luna who were traveling for a longer period of time usually tourists in India are very very the western tourists are very very open-minded people otherwise you probably don't go to India and I loved interacting with them and I loved learning from them. There are two types of tourists that I will stay far away from. There are tourists who are on a spiritual journey, but actually want to smoke a lot of hash. Um, especially in Rishikesh, you will find those people. And also there are tourists who are looking for a hippie experience. You will find them a lot in Goa, but actually they just want to party and, um, you know, use a lot of drugs. Not my type of people, and I will stay far away from them. But otherwise, like the Western tourists that I met are, very, are usually very, very open-minded and educated people. I really liked interacting with them. A final question from the Belgian traveler. Is it okay to walk with a camera on the streets? I saw some videos from vloggers and noticed some Indians really don't like cameras and sometimes try to take them away from you. What are your experiences with this? I didn't notice that this in your vlogs. I never experienced this. Like, I don't know, maybe it's just like my 
happy-go-lucky attitude and I just film things. And like I said before, I, I used to ask people if I could film them and at one point got told, like, stop, this is India, you don't need to do that. But, like, I don't know. If, if I see somebody looking angry at me or something, I will just go away. But I, didn't, I honestly did not experience this at all. Like, usually Indian people are so proud of their country and they love to show it. And also, like, the food vendors, they love to show off their food and stuff like that. So I don't know what these vloggers were doing. Maybe they were being very rude. Maybe they, they encountered someone on a bad day. That's also a possibility. I didn't, I didn't, I, I have no answer for this because I didn't encounter it at all in India. It's fine. And like, nobody stole my camera. I was there for two months walking in the streets with my camera. Nobody stole my camera. There's a vlog from, uh, I think it's from Ben Brown for the rickshaw run in, in India. He actually forgot his DSLR or his Jack's Gap on the, on the uh, roof of the rickshaw. And uh, only fi- found out later, like hours later, that he forgot his super expensive Mark II camera on the rooftop of the rickshaw. So you would think, you know, it's gone. But no, this is India. So the hotel called the rickshaw driver. The rickshaw driver found the camera and brought the camera back. Yes. And I was watching this video and I was like, yep, that's the India I know. So to be very honest, if you ha- I think if you have a positive attitude... Um, you will for sure have a good time in India. I, they say like India gives back what you put into it. And I, I honestly experienced this. So yeah, that would be like my final word. Uh, be positive, be kind, be nice to people. And you will probably have a wonderful time in India. If you like this video, please put a thumbs up. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel and would like to join me when I go back to India end of September, click that subscribe button and then I will see you next time. Bye.